If you've looked it up, let's just close our eyes and return to the Lord and we ask Him. Dear Lord, we turn to you because you are God. And when we do, Lord, we we tremble in awe before you. And we have no words, Lord, to describe you, even to pray to you. You are an awesome God. You are so great. And we feel, Lord, that we should just bow, bow our heads and be still in your presence. We do that, Lord, in expectance, Lord, that you are going to speak to us. And when we realize that, Lord, that you are about to speak to us, it scares us, Lord, that you, the Almighty God, wants to speak to us through this well-known verses. And, Lord, please help us to remember that we are mere people in your midst. Please remember us and be gentle with us, Lord, as you reveal yourself through your word. Bless us, Lord. Teach us, Lord. Guide us and comfort us, please, Lord. I pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is an awesome passage. Uh, today is the Sunday of the Trinity. It's the Sunday of the Trinity. So it's, it's about the triune God. And uh, this passage that I'm going to read, this scripture, is, uh, is one of the few uh, scripture readings where you have all three of the being of God together in one passage. So we're going to read from the Gospel of John, verse three, uh, chapter 3, verse 5. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to the Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it is going. So it is with every so it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But still, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak, of, speak to you of heavenly things? I'm, no one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. We read up to there. This morning in our service, uh, in the Afrikaans service, we had a baptism 
And uh, the baptism is by, by all means the, the, the sign or the token um, of God's covenant. Him, him binding himself, committing himself to us through the baptism. He uses this, these words which is well known throughout the Bible, known as the covenant verse. I am your God, you are my children. And these verses you will find all over the Bible. You will find it right up till the, the last uh, chapter in the Bible. I am your God, you are my children. It's as if God tries to, to reveal himself through this sacrament to, uh, to us and to our children. He is God. He is the only God. There is no one like him. Paul writes a, uh, a, uh, a eulogy on him in, uh, in Romans 11. Please go and read that and you will find. Who can we compare him to? Through him is everything. He is the almighty God. Go and read that. You will find it there in Romans 11. The problem is that as we speak and as we think about God and as we understand the covenant that He makes with us, um, it's difficult for us to really grasp it because we, are, we, we tend to think in terms of, of worldly things and it's easy for us to understand the worldly things. We use some words that, that is sometimes like church words, you know, like uh, grace and goodness and, and love and, and so on. But it, it doesn't really describe this God. It doesn't bring him into our reality that, that we see him here with us, that, that we experience it. So who is this God that we worship? Who is this God that we are busy with? What do we believe of Him? Now normally we, we would stand up in our church and say the credo in Afrikaans to say what we believe about God. We believe in God the Almighty, the Father, the Creator of everything and we believe in Jesus Christ um, the Son who came and died for us on the cross and we believe in the Holy Spirit. We understand Him as the triune God. We understand Him on, in these three manners in which He sort of reveals Himself to us. Unfortunately, even that is difficult for us to grasp. Because when we look at God, we look at Him through, in two ways. We have two ways through which He reveals Himself. And uh, the one is the revelation, the, the general revelation that you find in nature and through everything that's around us. And yet in St. Helena Bay it's not difficult to see that. Yeah, you go up onto the mountain here and have a look at the view and uh, even early in the morning when the sun comes up over the sea and when you're out there on the Britannia Bay side you can see the sun setting over the sea again and you see this beauty of God and if you, if you look at the sea and the, the, the things that live there, I mean who of you have watched that little movie on the octopus teacher? It's fantastic. Uh, th this creation of his, um, if you look at the sea and see every little drop is, is teeming with life. It's, it's just an amazing God, this creator God. So we can see his tracks. You can see him being here in what he's made, what he has made. Um, you, can, you can look up at the stars at night and see how great and how big he is. That he is over all of this universe. How large and it's unspeakable to describe this God through the creation. But we understand the Father as being the creator. We know that too because of the, the particular revelation which is through his word. 
through the Bible. It teaches us that it is God the Father who made all this. And you can see it, you can see it in the little flowers, you can see it everywhere. It's God the Father who is the Creator. So that is what we understand of the Father. But it's as if we are looking through a keyhole at God. We can see tracks in all of this creation. We can see through the Bible, we can hear something about Him. But it's so limited that we cannot really explain God, the Father. The Son is this same God. It's not someone else. The Son is this same God who became flesh. It's the same words that you read in the Bible that you saw through this keyhole that became flesh just in the two chapters previous to this one. John says that. The Word became flesh in Christ Jesus. The Son of God became man. God became man. The Son is this God that became flesh. He is, like the, the Scripture, is the revelation of God, of what we can see through the keyhole. In Christ, He is the revelation of God. He is this God that created everything, that became flesh. Now you must understand the word Son of God um, correctly. Um, we tend to think in terms of our worldly experiences of a father who has a little boy that's, and call, call him his son. <laughs> but it's, it's not that relationship. In, in, in the Middle East, your only son or your eldest son is your everything, is your all. So when God comes and, and reveals himself in the son, it means this is everything he is. He reveals himself to us as his son, as his everything. So Christ is everything that God is. Therefore he says, if you see me, you see the Father. That's me. Um, so Christ comes and, and shows us how the Father is, reveals this Father to us, and He reveals Him as a loving Father who opens His arms and takes the little kids on His lap, and who opens His arms for you and loves you so much that He gives you everything. He is everything. He is this love, John says in his letter later on in the Bible. He is love. This is who He is. He, he presents Himself to us, Christ Jesus, as this loving God. So in Christ we see Him as the one who loves us. Therefore, John 3 verse 16, God so loved this world that He gave His Son. It's, it's the love that's behind it all. That's His character. Who he is. Now it's understandable that we uh, that we can can philosophize about God and the relationship with the Son, and and we can see it through the the creation, and we can see it in Christ. But it's still a cognitive um, way of thinking, it, explanation that we are giving. It's still something that's in our minds that we are trying to describe. And even as I stand here at this pulpit, I try and do it with my mind. I try to explain God with words. But there's something more. This God is not just the historical Jesus that came in the year zero, 2,000 years ago. He's not just this creator. He's also the Spirit. And the Spirit is something much more because it makes 
its reality now. The spirit is now in this moment in this church. Although we are few here, the spirit is here now. This almighty God who created everything, who died for us on the cross, is here in this moment. He makes all of this reality that it's not mere words of explanation anymore. It becomes part of you. The Spirit is like the water that we use for the baptism. It fills you. It's around you. It touches you. It convinces us of Him. That He is our God. It's more than that. He's also the comforter, the Bible says. He is, he's opening His arms for you. And you can, you, He's with you, always. And he, he teaches us throughout the Bible, I am with you in this very moment. And that changes you. It changes reality for you. It becomes a new world that you live in. The reality is not this mere world that Nicodemus understood and Jesus said, but you think in worldly terms. How will you think if I tell you about the heaven? It's, it's spiritual. It becomes a new world, a new reality that you live in. The Spirit makes this a new reality. It's a reality with Him, in Him, around Him, always. It's a new world. You become born again into a new reality. This passage says, the Spirit, it's as if you are born again in this new reality. A spirit being, a, a, a world where God is. And that's the way we, we should think of our own worlds and our reality where we are on this Sunday of the Trinity. It's a world with God. The God, the triune God, now, at this very moment. And that's the way we should think of St. Helena Bay. It's a place where God is. Not the devil and all kinds of stuff. It's where God is. The, he is here. And He comforts us. And He teaches us. And He reminds us how He loves us. How He died for us. How he's, be, he's been with us. This God. This triune God. Now, does it answer our question, who is this God? Who are we dealing with? Who is this triune God? I have a friend uh, who's at our house at the moment, she was in church here this morning, uh, Marlise, and she mentioned it last night when we spoke about the sermon this morning, and she said, if you can grasp God with your words, then you don't understand Him. <laughs> so there's no way that I can really um, explain God, describe Him with my words this morning. He's, all I can say is that He's here with you now, in this reality, and He changes you. He makes you believe He is the one. You live out of Him. It causes me to come to a point where if I want to speak about God, I would rather, I would rather be quiet. Because there's no words. And it brings you to a point where you are in awe before Him. And you want, only want to worship Him. And words don't suffice. Bonnie of said, you can't speak about God. You can only talk to Him. 
So let's be quiet for a minute. Just turn to him. He's here. Lord, we can only talk to you. And there's no words by which we can describe you. We don't have words to worship you. You are the all-encompassing, all-omnipotent God. You are always there. You are the creator. The one who made this universe and every hair on our heads. You are the loving God who became flesh, became man and gave your all for us on the cross. Your love, Lord, is indescribable. There's no words. You, Lord, are here, right here, in this moment. It's, it makes us speechless, Lord. But you come down and you make, and you, you put in an effort to be here, here where I am. Just because you love me so. How can I ever thank you, Lord? With what words can we? How can I ever live a life that would bring you the glory that you that you deserve? There is no one like you. Please help us, Lord. Please help us to live in this reality of yours. To you be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's sing a prayer song for the Lord. All right? <clears throat> Father, I love you. I worship and adore you. Glorify your name in all the earth. Glorify your name. Glorify your name.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. Amen.